back in the fall, we launched a campaign in North Carolina to um, increase voter confidence because we know there are a lot of questions surrounding cybersecurity and what goes on in elections. Um, in doing that, we thought that, um, you know, our biggest challenge uh, would be to address cybersecurity. And now, you know, almost a year later after we launched that campaign, not only are we trying to address cybersecurity, but we're trying to um, address public safety and physical security um, in many aspects as well. Um, so with the technology that we have today and the efforts that we put forward, I think from as, an, as the state's chief election administrator and working with the 100 county boards of elections, what we try so hard to do is to help people understand that um, elections happen more than just two days out of the year and that the planning and preparation that we put into making an election happen, um, matter of fact, right now is probably the most uh, stretched and stressed times for a county board of election. Uh, we are deep into ballot proofing. Um, that means that'll be the time when we can prepare our, our election equipment. Uh, our absentee by mail ballots uh, go out starting September the 4th. Um, so there's a lot of preparations around that. Then we go into our early voting period and then we have election day. So for us, the kickoff um, to our election is really uh, here in just a few days. It's not 84 days from now. Um, to deal with that, we many of the things that we have done um, have been in place. It's just trying to make the public aware of what does go on. Um, one of the key things, we put out uh, 10 items and I'll quickly just go through those, but um, it's, you know, there was a mention of the issues that we had in one of our counties with our e-poll books, but it was human error. Uh, but so there was no evidence of an attack, but it was trying to one, confirm that, but then also communicate that to the public. We were able to confirm it largely because of the partnerships that we have uh, with our D, with the federal agencies, DHS, CISA, um, the FBI even, groups like that. But here at the state level, uh, we work very closely with our state emergency management who not only deal with natural disasters, but they do deal with cyber events. Uh, same with our North Carolina National Guard, uh, their cybersecurity unit. We have a cybersecurity advisory panel, and then we have uh, in-house cybersecurity um, individuals working on our staff. We moved to a completely paper ballot system in North Carolina um, back in, in the last latter part of last year. Um, when I came on as state director, that was one of the first things um, that I had to address was certifying voting equipment for the first time since 2012 in our state. Uh, we also do have a certification program for our voting system, so that was uh, really key. We have a state law in place that says that our voting systems are not connected to the internet. We do extensive logic and accuracy testing uh, before every election. And that's really key when we talk about the technology is making sure that we test those systems and test them thoroughly. Uh, most folks don't realize that with our voting equipment, each and every unit that's deployed is tested before the election. And it's not just tested for functionality. That ballot um, that would, you know, the voter would insert into the tabulator or do through the ballot marking device is, is thoroughly tested. Every candidate, every uh, ballot question, every position, every ballot style, and then, like I said, on every single unit. Um, so, you know, we then go into, you know, we have an audit system. Um, North Carolina has had an, a post-election audit since 2006, and we do additional audits that um, aren't actually even done in, in many other states. So we're pretty proud of our audits program. We have a dedicated investigations division. So be it something with um, voters themselves or with the voting equipment, we can dig into that. And then I think the previous presentation was just really insightful, um, the, the importance of the voter in, in, our, in protecting us from cybersecurity, um, them being part of the process. Uh, they are our poll workers, the neighbors, the people that folks go to church with or uh, go to the gym with, those are the people that are, are serving as our precinct officials and carrying out the election on the front lines. And now they're doing so um, with PPE. <laughs> It's interesting to think that when we held our Super Tuesday primary, the first time we had been a Super Tuesday state uh, back on March 3rd was also when North Carolina had its first confirmed case of coronavirus. Mm -hmm. So since that point, we had to come straight out 
and try to address what we were going to be doing um, because we knew from the results of that primary uh, that we were going to move into what we call a second primary in our state. Um, it's a runoff for uh, primary races. And so we knew we would be conducting an election during the pandemic. Uh, so we issued guidance. Um, we, I issued an emergency order actually moving that election um, because it's, it's, it's hard to think, but back in that time period in March, we were talking about an eight week period. And what do you do with to move out of that eight week window? And here we are you know, months into um, this pandemic. And so we have, um, we, we did not move to all mail balloting. We made that choice because uh, traditionally North Carolina only has a four to 5% participation. And we knew that that would be a, a big behavioral change for North Carolina. We also listened to our counterparts in other states that do have all mail balloting and learned that that shift has taken years not weeks and not months. Um, so we knew that, that we would have supply chain issues, logistical issues uh, to do that. So what we tried to do was a three prong approach to make sure that the voters could, um, you know, cast their ballot without fear of disease. And that meant looking at how could we improve our absentee by mail process. North Carolina was already a no excuse absentee state. So that put us one step ahead. We made recommendations to the legislature to either eliminate or reduce the number of witnesses that we have in our state. And they did that, um, reducing it down to one. We made other modifications to just improve the overall process for someone when they vote absentee by mail. If anyone sees what our new absentee by mail envelope design looks like, it's night and day compared to what we used to do. And that was in working with groups like the Center for Civic Design to make it more user friendly and understandable. Then we had to also think about how do we carry out in-person voting? And so we've worked closely with our health and human services officials, our state emergency management, and the guidance that we received from the CDC. And we also issued another emergency order that requires the counties to be open more hours on the weekends and we we put in some standards about how many voting site one-stop early voting sites they have to have uh, to the number of registered voters to reduce the lines and the amount of time that people are in uh, the polling place most voters in north carolina will vote early we know that in in most of our counties that is their preferred method so we wanted to make sure that one stop could go as smoothly as possible because if if we've had a large turnout with absentee by mail and a large turnout by with one stop early voting, then that makes election day go more smoothly where we do have a high demand on poll workers, on voting spaces. Um, but if we don't have as many uh, voters to serve on that day, then we can make that process go a lot more smoothly.